Rob Stevenson. I am a solution consultant with DeliverOn, and I'm going to be talking about mobile development and making taco apps. So let's go. So I'm talking on mobile development, and um, basically I want to just kind of go over what makes mobile development different and, and, and also difficult in relevant like regarding uh, web development or server-side development or anything else um, you want to build code for. But what makes mobile development different? And then I'm going to go over um, native iOS and Android development. We'll try to make a little simple program, an app for iOS and Android. And we'll kind of go through, you know, just really high-level um, understanding of how to do that. All right, so... Like I said, uh, I'll go through an iOS app using Swift, um, storyboards, and then I'll go through an Android app using Kotlin and an XML if, if all works out. So let's, uh, let's do that. So um, the idea is I'm just going to make kind of a simple Hello World app. No, I didn't want to do that. Um, that just increases a counter when you, when you hit a button. So. Call it taco time. Taco time. taco time. So we are going to create a single view app. Call it taco time in Swift. You can use core data. Core data is like a persistent. Um, it's basically um, a, a dang it. What's the analogy for for C sharp for? Link. What? Link? No, 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 no. Entity framework? Yes, Entity Framework. That's what I'm thinking. It's basically Entity Framework for, for iOS. Um, you got unit tests and UI tests, but we'll go into those. First thing I'll complain is it'll tell you, hey, you don't have a team, so I can't um, create a signing certificate for it, so Xcode will automatically create that for you. But what I wanted to get down into was these two classes. You've got your app, which is basically singleton, and iOS will be then calling that to do certain things for running the app, or when it's going in the background, foreground, etc. View controller is basically um, the <laughs> <laughs> uh, view controller. So um, I didn't know. Can we watch YouTube during this? Yeah, let's do it. Um, I just wanted to look at someone replied to a comment. <laughs> Open and automatically plays the video. Nice. Um, so iOS by default uses a model view controller architecture. So view controllers are essentially just like what they sound. You've got your views, and then you're um, doing everything in the view controller. So. And then you have your storyboards. So storyboards are essentially just a collection of views, and, and you can um, then describe how the app moves from one view to, the, to another, or essentially a view controller with views on them. So we will just add a label and a button. Doesn't really matter where I put it. It matters. Yeah. Well, I'll kind of get it a little bit later. So. Well, it's going to download your app. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's terrible. All right. So um, I'll get into a little bit with layout. But basically, by default, when you are adding things to a storyboard, they are fixed at where they are, um, and you can run it. So I can, I can run this as is now. So there it is. doesn't do anything. Fancy. So um, now we need to hook these up to something, right? So that's what this little button right here is called the um, companion view, I think. Assistant editor, that's what I call it. So, so yeah, your code on one side, you got your view on the other. There's multiple ways to do this, but the way that I like to do it is to control click, just drag. 
then it creates what they call outlets. Oh, my button. Oh, I made it big. Cool, right? So, uh, I'll explain this a little bit too. Is is um, this is telling you after the nib is loaded? What the heck does that mean? So, that is essentially what a storyboard is. Is a, it's called a, a nib. Um, Native Interface Builder is the name of it, but basically what uh, a storyboard is, is just a collection of objects. So it just kind of describes them in a, in a binary format where it gets compiled and then it's loading that and it's just allowing you to have reference to those, those objects when they're instantiated. So, so that's what these outlets mean is that, all right, now I've got a reference to that object that, that was created in the view did load, right? So now what I can do is just say, uh, I could just reference that button and then attach a, a, uh, an action to it, but you can also do the same thing for actions. Did you, did you control Yep. Control click. That's what I'm doing. So once you've added a reference, it'll automatically say, "Okay, you probably want to, you want to do a, a, an action." So you can you specify the different action types. Like you can select when they touch up or down and up and all these different types. So we'll call it button press. And then we'll just have so then when we press the button we just want to increase the counter and then counter just do like that thank you all right uh, no semicolons needed in, in Swift. They're optional, actually. And when I was moved back to C sharp, that was the most annoying thing. <laughs> Remembering the freaking semicolons. Mm -hmm. Because you also get a very weird error when you don't have semicolons. It's kind of like, it doesn't tell you, hey, you need a semicolon, idiot. So um, I could just set the text. One command per line. What's, that like? What's also kind of cool is uh, you can put emoji in here really easily. All right. So now we want it to say there are no tacos. And then can you put an emoji in your comment? Yep. And then I want to add a counter. And then I'm going to rename the button. So this, this thing over here is like your properties. That's what this little thing is. So I'm just going to call it add taco. Now we need to add constraints. So by default, like I said, it'll just add it wherever you want, and that is, is essentially the old way of doing layout. <clears throat> what they call it, just absolute layout, basically. So then, where you add layout, you do the control kit, click thingy again, and then you're saying, okay, I want to pick something else that I want this constraint to be relative to. So this is the parent, and I want to center it, and then I also want to say, okay, I won't. so that it turns red because it's like, all right, you added one constraint, but you need to fully constrain me and tell me everything that I need to know about where I should live. So 
you can do that by adding the top space. And then since the label is still going to be just that size, then I need to add a size to it. So that's the other way to do that is this, they call it the um, pinner utility. So you can pin it to certain things and I want to say, okay, I want the size to be within 10 pixels on each side. Add those constraints and then I want it to be centered. And same thing with the button. I just want it to be constrained within that and then horizontally, horizontally constrained. So let's make it bigger and run it. Now you can add tacos. Alright, cool. All right, I think I think that's pretty much it for the iOS side, and let's do the same thing. All right. Yeah. All right. So uh, we will add a button. And then just like this one, I could say, all right, I want this button to attach to these different sides. So um, in Android, you've got your layout as an XML file. So everything that you uh, see, you can most people, or a lot of people, will just edit the XML file or they use the WYSIWYG editor. I'll also point out, related to iOS, there, the, the nibs that I was talking about, they actually are XML files. Um, I don't know anyone that, ed that edits them directly. Like, it's pretty much, you can break things really easily and shoot yourself in the foot if you are editing those direct, directly, but it's, it's pretty common in um, Android to, to do it here. So I've got a button that has an ID of button and then a text view that has an ID of text view. So then how do I get a reference to that in the code? So we we'll go to our code and it's pretty simple. We do var label you go find by ID. So either it takes in a type text view, and then I need to pass in the ID that gets generated from the layout for here. So the way you do that is you use this R class, and it's basically, like I said, it's just a resource file that is um, compiled, and, it'll, and it breaks down to layout. So it's pretty much just following the same tree that is set up right here in your re resources folder. Good. Like I said, the text is like I did. So I've never used Kotlin before, but the Android I did using Java, there was there wasn't anything like uh, label dot text. It, it was set text. Is this all because of Kotlin, or did Java add that sort of too? There was, always, uh, there was never any oh, property setters. Yeah, yeah. Colin has property setters. Okay. Yeah. So you would still have to use set text in Java? Yep. Then... Yep, yep. Oh, you can use emoji here, too. Yeah, you can. Let's make that bigger. And then the way you add a reference to an event is click on click and then I'll say hey I don't know what that is I think it should add it automatically last time I did this it didn't work oh an ID ear <laughs> nice 
So if you just do fun, not funk. I just think they should have done funk instead of fun. But they probably want like, super like, reduced code. Yeah. Films, yeah. It'll go, I don't know what a view is. Then you can go import. I did an option return. So that's the same thing as doing command return in Visual Studio to automatically add a reference. So now it's okay with that. And then we could do our counter equals zero. And then label.text. And then the way you do that is uh, dollar sign counter. Yeah. And then we can add the same taco emoji. Let's just get a reference to it. There it is. And now we have tacos. Yay. Hey everybody, thank you for watching my taco app creation on iOS and Android. Um, hope you enjoyed it, thanks.